It seems that there is a change in perspective that you've had recently that has helped you get into greater alignment with who you truly are and how it is you serve the collective or how it is you provide to the collective, okay? It feels like you're manifesting or continuing to develop from a place of understanding what it is that you have to provide to the, to the situation, to the community, whatnot, whatever, and, and um, moving forward with that. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your moment whenever you are guided to watch this reading, yes? So please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is definitely a timeless reading. So whenever you're guided to watch this reading or whenever you are, whenever you stumble across this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you in that moment, regardless of time, yeah? Uh, so just keep that in mind. And as always, um, if you're going to dive down into the rabbit hole of morning coffee, <coughs> excuse me, make sure that you pay attention to the titles of the readings, not the dates, because then that, that will give you a good view as to whether or not the reading is going to resonate for you. Yeah. Happy Monday, guys. Uh, I hope you all had a good weekend. Um... I had a good weekend. It was a really nice weekend. Uh, very relaxing. You know, I got to, I finally got to get back to doing um, the uh, Your Week Ahead. So if you guys haven't checked that out yet, link can be found in the, in the, up here in the top right of your screen. You'll also be able to find it in the description box and the pinned comment down below. Definitely go ahead and check that out. That was a really fun session. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything to start with today. Um, don't really have a story to tell. Uh, let's see. Is there anything, are there any talking points? Yeah, yeah, not really. All right. So let's just get into it. I'm going to use the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot today. Where's the box for that? I'm going to show you guys so you can see. Um, but I can't find the box. Anyway, I'm going to be using the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot. Yeah. And then uh, I'll be using the after tarot for clarification. Yes? All right, guys. Let's get into it and see what we've got for to the collective for today. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm gonna give this five shuffles, yeah? Here we go. One. For the collective, what's going on with the collective? What would you like, what would you like to discuss with us today, Spirit? This is two. What would you like to discuss with us today? This is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty. Let's see what we've got going on. What's going on with the collective right now, Spirit? What do you want to discuss with us? We do have, we have the Ten of Cups at the bottom of the deck, and then the Empress wants to show herself as well. Um, she's down under there. 
we have quite a few cards that have come out here. Um, so you have the Queen of Pentacles and the Magician that have fallen face up in this situation. Um, this is the subject of the reading. So this is the person that what I'm feeling here is what I'm, what I'm really what I'm getting is the Queen of Pentacles is the individual that is watching this reading on their behalf right now. OK, so that would be you watching this reading here to get some sort of insight, get some sort of information, you know, to get some clarity or some understanding. And it feels like you are definitely manifest some manifesting something from your sense of worth. Uh, all of this work that we've been doing on ourselves lately has really helped us understand who it is we truly are on a deeper level, what it is we wish to provide to the collective or to the community or to your families or whatnot, whatever, what it is that you are able to provide to the collective and manifesting from that place, okay? With the Ten of Cups at the bottom of the deck and the Hanged Man underneath that, actually. Um, uh, well, even more. But what I'm getting here is the Ten of Cups is representing, yes, ultimate wish fulfillment, ultimate emotional fulfillment and all that kind of stuff. But it also um, is representing the community or a collective of people and how you relate to that. Because underneath the Ten of Cups is the Hanged Man. Underneath that is the Nine of Cups. And then the Three of Cups to death, okay? But what this is really all talking about, yes, death is a transformation. The Three of Cups is a, a, a celebratory energy or a collective energy, just like the Ten of Cups. But what this is kind of feeling like here for the collective right now, Ten of Cups, the Hanged Man, and the Nine of Cups. It seems that there is a change in perspective that you've had recently that has helped you align, get into greater alignment with who you truly are and how it is you serve the collective or how it is you provide to the collective, okay? And it, it, it feels like there's definitely a strong energy right now of you feeling very content or settling into a level of contentment, Nine of Cups, in terms of how it is you interact with the collective, with a group of people, with the community, I should say. And so from there, with this Queen of Pentacles and the Magician, it feels like you're manifesting or continuing to develop, grow, expand, build your reality, your environment, your business, whatever, from a place of understanding what it is that you have to provide to the, to the situation, to the community, whatnot, whatever, and, and um, moving forward with that from that place, okay? You have two more cards here. You have the Knight of Swords and the Six of Wands. This is good, in a way. Knight of Swords, Six of Wands. The Six of Wands is a good thing, okay? Um, what I'm hearing is the Six of Wands is representing the victory that, has, that you have recently achieved in terms of understanding or gaining a, a greater sense of self. That's literally what I'm hearing with this Six of Wands, greater sense of self. But then with the Knight of Swords, it seems that to me that you are either on the defensive, like actively defending that, or are um, keeping a watchful eye out for anyone that may come through and try to disrupt this Six of Wands, this victory, this feel-good energy for you. Now, we do have another side of the equation. <coughs> oh my goodness. Excuse me, guys, that's really gross. I'm doing well with not smoking, though. Wednesday is going to be two weeks. And actually, total sidebar, but I've noticed just like a week and a half into not smoking cigarettes, my singing voice has come back and it is so freaking strong. Like, I can, I can easily hit notes that would have been a struggle almost two weeks ago. And, and, and I, I don't know, for me, it's just kind of like... Um, I'm kind of surprised that it came back so quickly. Anyway, anyway, so I'm still I'm still working on it. I'm doing well and, and, and getting better. All right, so going moving back to the reading. Now we do have another side of the equation, I feel like, um, because you have here the five of wands. This has come out face up, and then there are, there are three other cards. And as they came out, they're all face down. And as they came out, it looks like they flipped in reverse. And so... To me, that's talking about some sort of opposition here. Five of Wands. And this, I, what I want to say about this so far, how this feels, is this feels like 
either an individual or maybe a group of people that don't necessarily agree with you, don't necessarily agree with your alignment or something. Um, and I think this is, I think you or the subject of this reading is coming through as the queen of pentacles because it feels like you may be withholding something, whether that be energy, communication, resources, you're withholding something from someone or something uh, uh, from a, from either a person or a group of people or a circumstance that is draining. It all has to do with you. This it all has to do with this sense of self worth that you have developed and self preservation that is coming from that. Okay, so you have opposition here with the five of wands. We have that with interesting. They all did come out in reverse, but it's the Ten of Swords, the Nine of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles is in reverse here. Give me a second, guys. I want to make sure that I'm getting this. I'm trying to decipher because, uh, okay, because the Ten of Swords... Ah, ha, 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 I get it. Mm -hmm. So what we have here, these are the energies of the old cycle, okay? Ten of Swords, Nine of Wands, Nine of Pentacles. First things first, what I feel specifically, and this is hitting me really hard, really strong. This Nine of Pentacles is a sense of sovereignty, but what I'm hearing about it is somebody here does not agree with it. There is a sense of strong independence um, that someone is standing in that other people don't like or that another person doesn't like, doesn't agree with specifically. Like this, this kind of feels, when I hear it that way, um, it feels archaic. It feels like the type of energy where it's like a woman isn't allowed or shouldn't be, isn't respectable if she stands on her own, if she's strong-willed, if she has a mind on her own, you know, like that kind of outdated type energy. Uh, that feels very specific. So it's gonna resonate for somebody out there, but for others of you that, that that doesn't necessarily resonate, just take the general idea and place it in your life. Like figure out, like th that. that's just kind of how it feels. Either it's that specifically or it's some sort of archaic, like old time, way old fashioned mindset, okay? But, but it also feels like someone doesn't agree with this, with somebody else's sense of sovereignty because it inconveniences them in some way. But that would be because you're no longer available for their manipulation, you know what I mean? So this nine of wands, I'm sorry, nine of wands, yes, nine of pentacles and ten of swords energy, this is the old energy that you used to be in, or at least the old energy that this queen of swords used to be in. I'm sorry, not queen of swords. Wow, that's interesting because I definitely see the queen of swords and the queen of pentacles as best friends. Like they're very similar energies. The queen of pentacles is a little more compassionate, but they're both hard asses and neither of them are going to take any shit from anybody, right? Okay, but the queen of pentacles... The subject of this reading is in the Queen of Pentacles energy, knowing their worth and standing their ground, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. This is energy, not gender, okay? And what the Queen of Pentacles energetically represents is self-worth, uh, unconditional love, yes, to a certain degree, but also not going to allow anybody to continue to take from her without giving back or definitely not going to allow anybody to not keep up their end of the bargain. Okay. And what I feel very specifically here, you guys, is that you are seriously standing your ground against this. And the five, the five of wands is representing this petty energy of someone literally. Okay. I'm going to, I hope that I, I, I ooh, okay. The energy that I'm getting from the five of wands is the type of bullshit that someone of great privilege would put forth when they're not getting what they want. Now, all of a sudden, 
they want to act a fool, they want to cause a scene, they want a Karen out. Sorry to all the Karens out there that don't act like this, but like they're told like this, this literally feels like a Karen type of energy where, you know, someone's being all righteous or indignant or, or, or is coming from a place of strong privilege and is now not getting what they want and it's going to cause a scene or doesn't understand why you have to be so independent or doesn't understand why you have to be so outspoken. Why can't you just give me what I want? Why can't you just do what I want? It's very much, did any of you see, um, there was, did any of you see the, the, the video of the, the two women at the Victoria's Secret recently where it was between a black woman and a white woman and the black woman was, ended up recording the white woman because I, I don't even know why they started, she started recording. Um, but she ended up starting recording and the white woman was upset about that and didn't want to be recorded and went to like, took it upon herself to go grab the phone out of the black woman's hand, which kind of looked like she was trying to hit her. And it just became this whole thing. And, um, the woman like literally had a mental breakdown in the middle of this Victoria's Secret, like crying and screaming at the top of her lungs on the floor, like completely throwing a temper, like a, a, a massive temper tantrum, right? The other one, the, the other thing that this energy, the other instance that this type of energy makes me think of, there was a, there's an also a video of two white women, but it was in a salon. And the owner of the salon, who was like a younger woman, probably in her like mid thirties or something, early to mid thirties or something like that, was, was coloring the, an older woman's hair. And she was saying, the, 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 the stylist was saying that she was gonna have her assistant come in and finish the job because she had to go do something else. And the woman that was in the chair was so privileged and so entitled that she was demanding that the, the, the original stylist do her hair, do the color, not the assistant, and got to the point where she even like went to go hit the stylist. And that's when the stylist was like, get the fuck out of my store. Like, are you, are you, out, of, are you out of your fucking mind? First of all, you think you're gonna talk to me some type of way in my store? Second of all, now you're gonna go try and hit me? Get the fuck out, right? That's what this is feeling like. Someone is not happy that you've ended a cycle that was a long and drawn out thing and that you're standing on your own. I'm literally, I'm literally, and, and I really don't mean any offense by this, but this is the image that I'm getting in my head and this is the world that we live in. So like, it's quite appropriate, but I'm literally seeing some privileged old white woman standing there talking about like all mad and all indignant because someone else decided to stand up for themselves and own their sovereignty. You know what I mean? It's like that type of ego rage that comes into play when someone else finally stands up to you after you've been, after, after you've been completely abusing them all along. Right? That's the energy that I'm feeling from this. And to be quite honest, now when I look back at this Queen of Pentacles, I don't even think you're phased. Whomever is in this Queen of Pentacles energy is literally just sitting there watching this person or watching maybe right, maybe figuratively or even like literal in some literal cases, literally sitting there on her throne as the Queen of Pentacles, knowing her worth, calm, cool, and collected, not even phased, watching someone else throw a massive fit out of entitlement because they're not getting their way or they're not getting what they want. And they don't understand why things have to change. Why do you have to be so headstrong? Why do you have to be so independent? Why do you have to be so outspoken? Why can't you just, why can't you just like assimilate? I, I'm not, I'm sure they're not using that word specifically, but that's kind of what it's feeling like. Why can't you just like get with the program? Because the program is old and outdated. Oh, and by the way, I have the right to free will and I just choose to say no. And it dri it's driving someone insane. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, righteous indignance is what I'm hearing. 
Oof. Yikes. Okay. Um, let's move forward. Let's move forward. I want to start clarifying. The first thing, I mean, really the only thing I think we really need to clarify here is this energy of the Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, Ten of Swords, all in reverse with the Five of Swords upright, right? Let's, I want to talk about that. Five shuffles. One. And I'm, I'm using the After Tarot for this. This is one. This is two. This is three. Four. And this is five. Okay. So I actually, I really want to split this up first. So let's just talk about the Five of Wands energy first. Why is the Five of Wands here? Or at least what does this represent in this situation? Five of Wands. What's the Five of Wands in this, please, Spirit? Why is the Five of Wands here? Eight of Wands. Communication. Trajectory. Aiming for something. What is the Five of Wands, please? High Priestess is at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> okay. So first of all, first of all, what's uh, what's driving this person or these in or, or this situation, what's driving it up the wall is the fact that you're literally, whomever is in this Queen of Pentacles energy, just like I said, is sitting there not saying a word, not giving in, not uh, like, like holding back, like not... Not engaging, <laughs> not engaging with this Karen is what I literally just heard. Sitting there with their mouth shut, simply just watching. And holding love, holding unconditional love. Okay, and so that's part of the reason why if you're in this Queen of Pentacles energy and you're not even willing to engage, it's because you're seeing the toxicity, you're seeing right through it. And you understand that for you to engage with this individual, for you to even back down even in the slightest and give them any bit of what they're asking for or not even asking for, whatever they're demanding, you would be enabling them to stay in this energy and you're not giving and you're not you're not willing to do that. But also this ace of cups energy is a strong sense of self-love that you're that you're standing in that you are well rooted in and coupled with the queen of pentacles you recognize that there is no reason for you to even engage with this underneath the ace of cups is the king of wands to the star you are so fucking solid and 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 and, and confident in yourself and that's what's helping to drive this karen again excuse me to all the karens out there that do not identify as this or do not act like this but that's literally the the more that the more confident you are and the more you stand your ground by not even lifting a finger or twisting your lips to say anything in response the more it drives them insane but this is where they're coming from okay you do have the 8 of wands here but the 8 of wands is literally speaking about communication it feels like this person or these people or this institution or this situation just keeps throwing all kinds of negative language, negative verbiage, um, excuses, reasons, questions, like cross, cross question, like, like cross cross questioning you, this, that, and the third, just like won't stop, almost relentless. But they're coming from this place, five of pentacles and the devil, okay? They're coming from a place of lack mentality. They're coming from a place of codependency, definitely codependency. And... It's interesting because what I'm seeing in this codependency now is, sure, there are a lot of times where people are codependent in terms of they're insecure and they need some, and, and they need like validation from other people or they feel like they can't do for themselves, this, that, and the third. This is the reverse end of it. So this is the individual that is, yes, 
part of this codependent relationship, but is on the hot, the top end of it, right? So they may be confident. They may have all the things that they want. They may be privileged, this, that, and a third, but they're codependent in the sense that they need others to be subservient to them because of some sort of entitlement. Think about it this way, you guys. Trigger warning. We're going to talk about slavery. But think about it this way. Back in the days when there was slavery, when it was a thing, right? When it was acceptable, when people had slaves. Even though the slave owners were rich, well-to-do uh, families that had plantations and had all, these, all this land and all that stuff, they were still codependent. They were codependent on the slaves, the people that did the cooking, the cleaning, bathed them, brushed their hair, fed, the, uh, uh, cared for their children, grow, grew the crops, harvested the crops, took care of the animals that they had a, like a farm with animals and shit. Like they literally did everything. Even down to the point where Slaves were raising these people's children. If that's not codependency, I don't know what the fuck is, right? So this is the reverse end of it. This is someone coming out of, and, and to be quite honest with you guys, this could be a situation, if you're really coming up against this in some pretty like mind-blowing ways, like the blatancy of it all, right? Then you actually may be working through some sort of ancestral karma. Okay, some of these people that really may be coming at you six ways sideways, like 60, like, like, like millions of ways sideways. Like I'm talking like some real extreme shit, like some real extreme entitlement blowing up in somebody's face. Most likely that was a slave owner in a back, back in the day. And now they're being confronted with their own bullshit and they're being told no and they don't know what to do about it, right? That, I mean, ancestral karma, if that's what, if it, if it really seems like, I don't care what your color is. I, you do not have to be a black or brown individual in this lifetime to have been a slave in the past and to now be working through this or a slave owner. You could have been, you could be black or brown now and been a slave owner back then. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is now, this, that, and the third. Like. We've all been through all of it, okay? And for those of you that are not dealing with something this extreme, just take this as an example. It, but like for some of you, this is exactly what you're going through. Okay. Okay, yeah, let's move on to the next thing. Um, I wanna talk about this now. We have the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, and the Ten of Swords all in reverse. I wanna talk about this. Okay, what is this? Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Wands, and Ten of Swords all in reverse. What is this for the collective, please, Spirit? Well, it seems you've done the right thing. 100% have done the right thing and are continuing to do the right thing. And to be quite honest with you guys, you can see that in the reaction of these people or this situation, right? The more you stand your ground, the more you hold your worth and your truth and your honor, and the more they freak the fuck out, the more that they lose their minds, that really should tell you right there, oh no, I did do the absolute right thing. Nine of Wands, Nine of Pentacles, Ten of Swords, all in reverse is, is clarified. And oh y'all, I knew it. I fucking knew it. Okay, sorry. I'll get there in a second, but it's clarified by the King of Cups, the King of Swords, and the Chariot. The King of Cups is the emotional maturity, the emotional stability. The King of Cups is literally representing you being able to sit there calm and cool and collected, like cool as a cucumber. Not even a look of distress on your face, like literally just like and just watching someone freak out or, or, or experiencing some sort of like shit storm around you of like crazy emotions because people are losing their fucking minds. 
but being able to just sit there and weather it and not let it phase you whatsoever. Why? Because you see right through it, King of Swords. You see it for what it, exactly what it is. And it's not disturbing your alignment, the chariot. You are moving forward regardless as to what these people say or do or what they don't say or don't do. You know what I mean? Like, that don't impress me much. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but yeah. At the bottom of the deck is the hermit. You are so well versed or so grounded in who it is you are and what it is you represent. Your light is shining through fiercely and it is triggering people. How dare you stand up? How dare you be an individual? How yeah, 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 fuck you, right? You know who you are up, standing up against the establishment, the Hierophant, the Page of Wands. You re-identified yourself, or at least you have a, you're singing a different tune. You're singing a different tune. You're dancing to the beat of a different rhythm, a new rhythm. You've changed the game. You've switched it up on them, and you've taken your power back. And people can't stand it. So, yeah, I'm going to close out the reading here. And it's so funny because I was sitting here. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on, wait. Okay, so we're going to close out the reading. We're going to get our Oracle Guidance. And um, I received a new deck. Bobby, thank you so much, Bobby, sent this deck into the channel to be used. It is the Gods and Titans deck. Um, and this came through because I've been looking for something... An, an oracle deck to represent the masculine side of the equation. We have, I have all kinds of like goddess decks and all that kind of stuff. There's a lots of representation of the feminine, but not all that much representation of the masculine. Um, and thank you to you guys for suggesting all kinds of great um, options. This was the first one that I went with because it called to me the most. Um, but as I was sitting here doing this reading, this, the deck has been like sitting on my desk here for a few days, um, and I've been very excited to use it, but I was feeling very specifically that I wanted to get closing oracle guidance from this deck. And I didn't quite understand why, especially since, you know, we're talking about a feminine energy here within the Queen of Pentacles, but it's not necessarily about that. It's more about what the Queen of Pentacles represents, and it's that sense of self-worth. And so now, as the at the very last clarification, we have the King of Swords and the King of Cups coming out as the reasons as to why or and or how you are standing your ground here. It's coming from a very masculine place. And now I understand why I was feeling guided to get closing oracle guidance from this deck, Gods and Titans, which is very masculine. It's because of this. It's because and and not just this, like this is not the only reason, but when I think about it. It's also because the collective, or at least this group of the collective that I've been channeling for, has very much been working on their masculine energies. Our masculine energies have been coming forward for us and helping us to place boundaries in our lives. Okay? So it makes perfect sense. In hindsight, in retrospect, now that I really, now that I see how the situation has developed, the reading has developed, and, and I think through it logically. Um, it makes sense. So we're going to get our closing oracle guidance from the gods and titans deck. Yeah, three shuffles here. One. And I literally like this. I had I just opened this. Like when I paused, I had to go get a, a, a knife so that I could cut the cellophane off because I literally just opened this deck. So this is really cool. This is two. This is a really awesome introduction to the collective here. Yeah, two. Last shuffle. This is three. All right, y'all. So, closing oracle guidance for the collective. Please, spirit. There it is, right there. Okay. We have Garuda. Travel. This is a beautiful deck. It's by um, Stacy DeMarco and illustrations by Jimmy Manton. Yes? Beautiful deck. 
All right, Garuda. Let's see. Uh, there you are. Travel opens your experience and expands the self. Whatever journey you wish to take, you are protected. And already this makes sense uh, because it seems in terms of travel or moving forward, it seems that there is a sense of leadership here. Um, um, also, I'm feeling a sense of walking this path on your own. Okay, because you're standing up against a bunch of different energies, a ton of narcissistic energies, it feels like that would rather keep you in the old sense of self or in the old you rather than allowing you to expand. And it's not even like they are or this person or these people have anything to do with your expansion or have any real ability to tell you you can't do something. But I feel like you're standing in opposition. You're definitely moving in a new direction and standing in opposition to other people that would rather you just stay the same. That would rather belittle you is also what I just heard, okay? Rather you stay in a position where you can continue to be belittled. Okay. Here we go. From a great golden egg, bird-bodied god Garuda was born. The cosmic shock of the crack lit up the universe, and he was so powerful that all beings, including the other deities, shook in terror. Reducing his size and energy to make himself more friendly to the gods, Garuda flew from heaven to earth, delivering nectar. I want, I, I, listen to that again. Listen to that again reducing his size and energy to make himself more friendly to the gods. That's exactly what you're moving away from. Instead of being a demure, obedient, good little boy or good little girl, you're stepping into your power, you're stepping into your worth and saying, no, I actually don't have to accept that any longer. I don't have to belittle myself. I don't have to reduce myself. I don't need to dim my shine just to make myself more palatable to you. Mm. One of the most ancient Hindu gods, Garuda is feathered in the Vedas, the, old, the oldest texts in Hinduism, and later in the great Sanskrit, Indian epic, the Mahabharata, which has been compared in importance to Shakespeare, the Bible, and Homer. He is much loved for his assistance to Vishnu in a number of heroic avatar in, uh, in a number of his heroic avatars. Oh, wow, there's a lot here. I didn't realize there's so much, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm just gonna read it. Perhaps the most well-known story featuring Garuda is that of the kidnapping of his mother Vinada after she lost a bet to her sister, the serpent queen Karuda. I'm sorry, Kadrua. Garuda asked the serpents what it would take to free his mother. They answered with a hiss, the elixir of immortality, Amrita. The Amrita sat in heaven with the gods, and they had it well guarded, not just by a ring of fire and a machine of warring blades, but also by two poisonous snakes of great mass and evilness. Although he knew the gods were omniscient, omniscient, and would know of his plans, brave Garuda flew to confront them and battle for the Amrita. Powered with the love of his mother and flying with super speed, Garuda defeated all. He extinguished the fire by sucking up rivers and spitting them onto the blaze. Diminishing his size, he crept under the sharp blades and ripped apart the two serpent guards. Taking the precious liquid into his beak, he soared downward toward the mass of serpents waiting for his return. While passing a cloud, he spotted Vishnu, who did not wish to battle the good, the good Garuda. Instead, the two gods reached a gentler agreement. Vishnu granted Garuda immortality, so he had no need to drink the Amrita, and Garuda promised to support Vishnu by being his flying companion and mount. Back on earth, Garuda placed the Amrita in view of the snakes, and his mother was safely freed from her prison. 
The snakes quickly scrambled to drink the treasure, but Garuda suggested that it was only right to perform a prayer beforehand. As they did, the god Indra that uh, swooped down and retrieved the potion and returned it to heaven. From that day forward, Garuda was Vishnu's magical Vishnu's, excuse me, magical mount, whose speed and agility were key to many of Vishnu's victories. The idea of a bird going through fire and not only surviving but flourishing like the phoenix is part of Garuda's energy. Garuda is still a potent symbol of flight today. It is even the name of Indonesia's national airline. Thailand also uses Garuda as, a, as its symbol, but it's the Buddhist representation, which is a winged deity that can change itself into human form. The Indian Brahim, Brahimini kite, a small bird of prey, is considered the living representation of the god, although it's much smaller than most large, eagle-like representations of the god. Call upon Garuda when you are about to undertake a difficult journey or for protection while traveling. If you need to make a connecting flight and are traveling to your, on your own for the first time or are even learning how to drive, Garuda will listen to your petition and help you. His presence in your life may indicate travel is near or that the phoenix aspect that you will flourish after a period of trial and possibly hardship is active. The shadow side of Garuda says that Garuda symbolizes speedy and violent action, although righteous in nature, and, is, and so is often used as a military symbol today. Re remember that you have the Queen of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords here. There's that military action, or there's that violent or speedy action. But what I'm picking up on for you guys is that you're willing to defend yourself here, okay? Very more, ooh, more than willing, more than willing is what I just heard. Okay, all right. Garuda possesses the question whether I'm sorry, Garuda poses the question whether force is always the best way, as he was able to negotiate with Vishnu instead of fighting him. Traveling, certainty, one of I'm sorry, certainly one of the great joys of life can open our perception and understanding of others, or it can contribute to indifference and inequality. Be mindful of how travel is a two-way experience and a true exchange. How can you respect those you visit? How can you honor your ways too and be an ambassador for all that you are? Respect others' space and traditions, whether it is respecting another car on the road or respecting another person's country. But it seems to me that whomever is in opposition with you doesn't respect your right to choose. And that's what you're standing against. Standing against. That's what you need to continue standing against. And in some cases, it's better just not to even engage with them. Yes? Excellent. So there you have it, guys. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very soon. Yeah? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>